save you from your sin. That's right. Amen. Albert Einstein said something. He probably said it in a um, maybe even a sexist or a. Um, this was a time when women were looked at under men. Yes. When Albert Einstein lived. Yes. He said this: Men marry women with the hope that they will change. No, I'm sorry. Men marry women with the hope that they will never change. A man marries a woman. He loves the way she is. He never wants her to change. She's perfect. I'm going to marry her. I like her the way she is. Women marry men a lot of times with the hope that they will change. To tell you what I'm not saying, I said, I didn't say it. I'm just repeating the quote. Don't say amen now. <laughs> Invariably, both are very disappointed. However, I want you to think about that. Not in a uh, you, you and your wife. You and, uh, I want you to think of this as Christ and the church. Men, Christ, marry women, the church, with the hope that they will never change. He, I'm sorry, I got that back. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ marries the church and hoping they will change. Hoping that they will. But we become in a relationship with Jesus Christ in the hope that he will change. We do. But if we didn't, we'd still be living the way the Christians lived when it first started out. When uh, Jesus Christ's blood was preached and strobe lights had no place in the house of God. But now we welcome the strobe lights and Jesus' blood has been pushed out the back door. I'm just telling you the truth. Contemporary ways have been brought in. We pray that God will change. God, you cannot be a God of love and, 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 and believe that we're going to go to hell if we don't change our way. But God says, yes, I do hope that you'll change. I've got life everlasting. Yes. Uh, Brother Kenny preached a while back. The manna fell in that wilderness. And the, the people wanted that manna. Even after the fact when Jesus fed the 5,000 people with a fish and bread, they come to him on the other side. He said, why have you come to me? Not because you love me. Not because you've come to see me. You want more fish and you want more bread. But you can eat fish and bread and you can die. They said, didn't the God, didn't God send our father's manna in the wilderness? He said, yeah, and aren't your father's dead and in the grave? But if you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, where did they go? They ran through all they took tail and run. They could not handle the fact that they would have to accept all of Jesus. He said, you will enter into a life of destruction if you keep on going the way you live. But I'll give you a life. I'll give you life everlasting. Praise God, he said. He give life out of the abundance of his heart. That word abundance is the same word that's used in that story with the fish and the bread. It said they gathered up the leftovers. That left, little word leftovers is the same word as that word abundance. He gathered up when I heard that preached, it was preached that maybe there's some world left over in your heart. And and God has to deal with that. Hallelujah. But these people come to God wanting worldly uh, satisfaction. That manna was only supposed to sustain those Israelites till they got to that promised land. Wow. You read, manna never failed in that promised land. But they begin to eat God. I, really, I believe that the moment they begin to eat that fruit, the manna stopped falling. Hallelujah. And what is it there that we're, what is it here that's so important in this story? Is that our relationship with God should be one that lead, that uh, we survive on communion, constant communion with God. But it's not that. We live off from uh who knows? Fellowship with other people. Why do you come? That's my question. Why? I ask my wife all the time. I love our church to death. And Brother Jess, Jess is not here and I trust that I'm not being recorded tonight. Hallelujah. But I see all the time that it's not just our church, but it's church in general. People coming for the wrong reason. 
I, if I'm going to come to church for a, a social gathering, uh-huh. I can get on Facebook uh-huh. and get the same right, satisfaction. Right. And that's why yes. that sinners don't want to come yes. to a social gathering. That's right. I, I could go join the Mason Lodge uh-huh. and become part of a social uh-huh. gathering, but I don't want to become part of a social yes. gathering. I want an everlasting love yes. relationship uh-huh. with Jesus yes. Christ, yes. one that burned with compassion yes. the Amen. night I got saved. One that burns with passion tonight. Lord, yes, help me to ever grow close to you. Though hell stacks up against me, let me live for you. The devil's going to rage, he's going to roar, and he's going to try to defeat. But it is the responsibility of the child of God to stand up in the face of diversity. Having done all you can do to stand, even so, stand. All of you want to fall, when you want to bow, just stand. Yes, when you want to turn tail and run, just stand. Oh, you telling me that God would have sustained Elijah had he stayed there? I don't know that. I don't know, Brother Robbie. I don't know that it wasn't God's will for Elijah to run. But I know what God spoke to me. I know the, the illustration that he gave me here tonight. I would have loved tonight to get up here and preach like a maniac. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Nothing I love better. But the devil don't want you to hear that I've got his trick figured out. And if he can keep you from reading his book, he can keep you from coming to church. And if he can keep you praying, he can keep you from coming to Sunday school. And if he can keep you from coming to church to Sunday school, he can keep your ears from hearing the words of God. And if you don't hear the words of God, Man does not live by bread alone, children of Israel. But it's every word of God. Every word that comes out of God's mouth is what sustains a man. You want to live a long life, children of God. Read your word. You want to live a long life, children of God. Pray and have constant communion with God. I want you to grasp this tonight. I always uh, tell that you've got two choices. You can respond. You can be a hearer of God's word only. Yes. Or you can also be a doer of God's word. Yes. I trust that you listen to me. Yes. I trust that. That's easy. Yes. I listen. You sit back and listen. But I want it to go into your heart yes. and stay there yes. and yes. you do what the word of God is telling you to do. Not what J.J. is telling you to do. Amen. What is it? Pray without ceasing. Man does not live by bread alone. But I don't have to convince you that you need to pray and read your word. But I know one thing also, and that's that somebody under the sound of my voice is hiding behind a juniper tree. I didn't say everybody, but somebody. How do I know that? Because I'm not foolish enough to believe that everybody here has been able to escape the realities of life. Yes, amen. Why did Elijah feel so hopeless that all he knew to pray was, God, take my life? He had tried everything he knew to try. Listen, after Elijah, they made a deal. They made a deal. Ahab and Elijah had a very clear deal. If God be God, then we'll worship Him. But if Baal be God, then Him. We'll worship Him. But they didn't hold up their end of the deal. Brother Robbie, you study it many times after this. The groves were still up. The prophets were still babbling. And Baal was still being exalted in the land of Israel. Elijah, with every intent of his heart, he wanted the people of God to turn from their wicked ways. Me and my daddy went on an emergency job the other night. We left about 11 o'clock. We 
we got to, I'm sorry, we left about four or five o'clock, got there about 11 o'clock, and we worked until four o'clock in the morning. 17 hours worked. And on the way up there, we had a very long conversation. It's always politics or religion with my dad. The most two controversial topics that a what sinner, now not a sinner, hallelujah, I'm not a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner. Now I'm saved by yes. grace. Amen? And someone who repeatedly commits sin has a conversation like this that don't always go well. Well, we had a good conversation. And one thing a sinner knows is that Jesus turned water into wine and that you shouldn't judge. They know that. And those were the two topics. I didn't spend much time on Jesus turning water into wine because Jesus turned that water into alcohol. I'll rip every page out of this Bible. I'll never stand behind this pulpit again. And you won't see me lift my hands and worship to a God that lies and contradicts us. But I worship a God who tells the truth. And when he says no drunkard will enter heaven, Jesus didn't turn water into alcohol. Well, I can't explain it, but I know that fact. So I'm not talking about that. But I will talk about the point that I'm not supposed to judge people. Because the Bible says judge not. But it goes on. And it asks you to judge yourself first. And Jesus gave the parable of a man that had a log in his eye trying to get a splinter uh -huh. out of his brother's eye. Yeah. He got a dirty back porch, but he's trying to sweep off his brother's back porch. Jesus said, pull the log out of your eye, then you can see clearly to get the splinter. So I told her, I told, I said, Daddy, we were to pull in that bank over there, and a man come pulling up in a white van with tinted out windows. He got out of that van, he had a ski mask on, a brown bag in one hand, and a AK-57 in the other hand. What you gonna think? Don't judge him now. I said, come on. Don't judge. Don't judge. Tell me what color my shirt is, but don't judge. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. To call me and give me father son advice, but don't judge me. Come on, now there is a time and a place for everything we know. Yes. And when I tell you tonight that there's somebody here hiding under a juniper tree, yes, I'm judging. But I'm not doing it because I'm glad you're behind that juniper tree. Right. Yes, yes. And I'm not doing it because I'm glad you didn't pray. And I'm not doing it because I'm glad you didn't read your Bible. Right. I'm doing it because I know that there's hell in this place. So if you didn't preach like you normally do, the Spirit of God just ain't as strong as it normally was. Maybe you're behind that juniper tree. Because I feel the Spirit of God. I wouldn't have been understanding you tonight and struggle my way through this message if I didn't feel the Spirit of God. And He's here and He's greater than every day. He's bigger than any problem. And he knows exactly what you need. It might not be what you want. Right. But he knows exactly what you need. Yes, yes. I've tried, I've prayed many times for things that I wanted so hard. Desires in my heart that I just had to have. And they never came. Y'all sang a song tonight and I never heard it. But somewhere in that song it says something like this. When you don't do exactly what I asked you to do, I'm going to keep living for you. When you don't come through like I asked, when you don't give me what I want, I'm going to keep on going in now. And that's that stickability. So every time you come preach, you tell us to keep going. Because that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. And every time I come back, you're still here. So if I can tell you to walk another step. Yeah. I seen a picture. I hate to keep rambling on because uh -huh. I went up through all of my notes already. Uh -huh. But I don't believe that it struck home just yet. Uh -huh. I don't believe you quite understood what uh -huh. I'm saying yes. just yet. Yes. Uh -huh. In this picture, and I believe I gave yes. the illustration somewhat yes. similar to this, there's two tunnels through the ground, one above another, and there's a miner in one of them on the bottom, and he's mining, and now he's turned around and started walking the other way with his pick hanging on the ground.